Hello and welcome to Axis Asia. Coming up, an unofficial visit sparks diplomatic anger. Taiwan's president making a stop in the United States. Beijing regards the self-ruled island as a breakaway province, while Taipei says it is distinct. Indonesia gets the boot, FIFA stripping the country of its right to host the Under-20 World Cup after an official question Israel's participation in the tournament. In hopes one of the world's oldest grains may be the seed of the future. Indian farmers and chefs rediscovering millet, a forgotten staple whose resurgence comes amid climate change and global food insecurity. Well, the former Taiwanese president Ma Ying-jeou was on a trip through China as a private citizen at the same time Taiwan's current president Tsai Ing-wen was in the United States. Two unofficial visits to two rival superpowers. Taiwan and where its leaders go has always been a sensitive issue. China regards a self-ruled island as a breakaway province, but Taiwan sees itself as distinct. Oliver Ferry has more. Taiwan President Tsai Ing-wen greets supporters as she arrives in New York on what has turned out to be a controversial stopover. It is Tsai's seventh trip to the U.S. since she became president in 2016. Like those previous visits, it is not an official one because Taipei and Washington do not have formal diplomatic ties. But the U.S. remains a firm ally of Taiwan. Its support for the democratically ruled island bolstered in recent years at Tsai underlined at a dinner attended by Taiwanese U.S. residents. We appreciate the U.S. government's commitment to Taiwan security under the Taiwan Relations Act. The more united the Taiwanese are, the safer Taiwan will be. And the safer Taiwan will be, the safer the world will be. We will work hand in hand with all our democratic partners to continue to firmly walk on the path of democracy and freedom. Tsai's New York visit came ahead of a tour of Guatemala and Belize, Taiwan's diplomatic partners. She will stop off in California on the way back, where she may meet House of Representatives Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy, having previously hosted his predecessor Nancy Pelosi in Taipei last August. China, which considers Taiwan a renegade province, protested against that visit. On Thursday, Beijing once again registered its discontent. The U.S. and Taiwan authorities made arrangements for Tsai to engage in political activities in the U.S. and described it as a stopover, so as to upgrade official exchanges with Taiwan. This seriously violates the One China principle and gravely undermines China's sovereignty and territorial integrity. And China made its presence felt on the streets of New York, with a large group of pro-Beijing protesters turning up to greet the Taiwanese president. In less than two months, the Under-20 Men's World Cup was supposed to begin in Indonesia. But FIFA has stripped the country of its right to host the tournament. Football's world governing body made the decision after an Indonesian official earlier objected to the participation of Israel. The heartbroken Indonesian Under-20 team received the news. Their country will no longer be hosting the tournament nor will they be playing in it. People might say this is just a World Cup, those who don't understand football. But this is our dream. FIFA's decision annuls the country's automatic qualifying spot as host. It would have been the first time the Indonesians had played in the competition since 1979. The move follows protests in Jakarta in March against Israel's participation. Support for the Palestinian cause in Muslim-majority Indonesia runs high, fueling local opposition to hosting the Israeli team, including from two important governors. But that move and its consequences has upset many in Indonesia, where football has a massive following. I feel these reactions from various factions of Indonesia that are boycotting Israel are deeply regrettable. I don't think sports should be influenced by politics. I think FIFA's decision is unfair because Indonesia has been chosen as host and now we're being one-sidedly removed due to these issues regarding Israel. I just don't think it's fair. The Indonesian president also expressed his disappointment but said the decision must be respected. FIFA acted over what the Indonesian Football Federation said was a failure to honour its commitments to the tournament. 
Jakarta had pledged to guarantee Israel's participation despite its pro-Palestinian stance when it was given hosting rights in 2019. The Palestine Higher Council for Sport, meanwhile, blasted FIFA for double standards. Despite historically trying to avoid mixing sport and politics, FIFA did recently side with boycotters when it banned Russia from participating in the 2022 World Cup following Moscow's invasion of Ukraine. Well, 2023 is the year of millet, or so says the United Nations. With the war in Ukraine creating a global wheat shortage, millet, a group of small grains, technically seeds, are taking center stage in the fight against climate change and hunger. One country looking to capitalize on demand is India, where the ancient ingredient had once been a staple before falling out of favor. Our team on the ground has more. An ancient grain lost in time. Millets indigenous to India are now fighting for a seat at your dinner table. Chef Vanshika Bhatia was first introduced to the grain in her grandmother's kitchen. But it was only four years ago that she started cooking with millets as a professional. I think millet is a better substitute uh, instead of using just wheat because it keeps you fuller for longer. You eat less and it, it's slow release energy. Millets also give a depth of flavor in the dish that wheat can never do. Gluten-free pasta, crackers, salads, breads. The versatility of millets is boundless. Considered an obsolete food, the reputation of millets is changing. In part, thanks to a push from Indian farmers. More than a thousand kilometers away in the state of Telangana, we meet India's pioneer millet farmer, V. Shetty Biradar. This crop is currently 60 days old and we'll harvest it after 100. During a work trip, we rediscovered this ancient grain grown by his forefathers. Since 2008, he has travelled across the country, training and convincing over 10,000 farmers to switch to millet. Tie the stems this way, so your crops stand up to the winds better and don't break in half. Remove the weeds around them as well. Used to growing cash crops like rice, wheat and sugarcane, often supported by government subsidies, Indian farmers are digging their heels in. It's not easy to convince farmers to grow one crop instead of another. They won't listen to us. The majority of the farmers used to grow sugarcane. Sugarcane farming requires 120 times more water than millet over 12 months. It needs more water and care. So we tell them to try millet. It only takes 60 to 90 days to mature. It's very easy to grow and there's no maintenance. So to make the farmers familiar and grow an interest, we tell them to grow sorghum millet as a border crop or intercrop. This alone is not enough. Veer had to use another strategy to get farmers to grow millets commercially. Just a few metres away from Veer's fields lies a millet processing unit used by 300 farmers. So this is what we explain to the farmers, that if they try to sell the raw material, it won't be sold for much. But as soon as they process the material, they're immediately paid double, and if they add value to the product, they'll be paid four times. Veer is not the only one to bet on millet. For scientists, this 10,000-year-old grain might be the seed of the future. On the outskirts of Hyderabad, the capital of Telangana, lies the sprawling campus of ICRASAT, International Crops Research Institute for Semi-Arid Tropics. Over 1,300 hectares of research labs, farmlands and the world's largest gene bank for dryland crops. Dr. Kuldeep is the custodian of these tiny grains where life begins. Now, this is the millet. This was stored in 1978. The bank contains 79,000 varieties of millet, considered smart food according to the Institute. Naturally, these are climate resilient. For example, pearl millet is one crop that is growing at most harshest conditions. And if we see the climate change happening, probably these are the crops which will be less affected than many other crops. If we see the water use, these have the highest level of productivity per unit of water that we are giving to these crops compared to rice or wheat or maize. 
painstakingly preserved between 4 and minus 20 degrees, these seeds are regularly tested for traits that can flourish during climate emergencies. These ancient kernels contain diverse genes, key to fight problems of the future. All these crops have evolved from their wild realities. And those wild relatives have evolved over millions of years. Probably more than half of the genes which are conferring resistance to diseases, insects, they have come from those wild species. One of the roles of the researchers here is to provide marginalized farmers from Asia to Africa with technical know-how on millet farming. I mean, they're gorgeous. Look at them. <laughs> Director General Jacqueline Darrow's Hughes is convinced that millets will play a key role in achieving food security. You've got obesity and hunger on either side and malnutrition in the middle. The millets can hit all of them. They're good for your health. They have a lot of nutrients. They have low GI, no gluten, so it will appeal to the export market. India convinced the UN to declare 2023 the International Year of the Millet. The country is already the world's leading millet producer with 15 million tons per year. While the war in Ukraine has disrupted the world's wheat trade, India hopes to fill the cereal gap with this wonder grain. And finally, a fashion show carried out in spectacular fashion. Something old and something new colliding at the Dior show in Mumbai, where the grand historic gateway of India Monument was transformed into a runway, obviously flanked by the iconic Taj Mahal Palace Hotel. Dior here displaying its pre-fall collection, but more than just a setting, India provided inspiration. The lineup featured silk dresses, evening coats, and sari-inspired skirts that referenced traditional Indian silhouettes. That's it for this edition of Access Asia. Thank you for watching, and please stay tuned to Friends Weekly.